The Chinese talk about three phases in their journey. They want to stand up, get rich, get strong. I think they are in the get strong phase of their journey. And when you are a strong country, you want to assert your interest. Whether it's claims in the South China Sea that you feel it's yours, whether it's interests that you feel you know, are infringed upon by another state, then you assert your interest. And that's what China has been doing. But in the course of doing so, I think they also understand that there will be a reaction from other countries. And again, there, they will have to find their balance in going about this. Do you think that they have, they, they have looked at, do you think they, they got more pushback than they expected? They certainly got a strong pushback from the US. And, and so what America has done now is going to be the big issue in the world. This new relationship, uh, the, the new defining feature of US-China relationship is no longer one of engagement, but one of strategic competition. People say it's full spectrum strategic competition, but it's really extreme competition. And what we worry about is what can go wrong in this dynamic, because one country does something, the other country can retaliate, and you create a tit-for-tat dynamic that can result in huge costs for both America and China, and a lot of trouble for the rest of us in the world. So you don't feel that there is a kind of uh, equilibrium that has been reached right now? We are certainly not in equilibrium. I think we, the, the world has to start thinking hard about you see, if you take a military sort of parallel, in, in the security world, uh, we think very hard about the collateral damage that's associated with dropping a bomb. People, you know, you understand the damage that you will inflict with using a weapon, but you, analysts, you know, the security community thinks very hard about retaliation, the risk of escalation, and then you consider carefully the consequences before you make any decision. Now, we are seeing full spectrum competition across economic and financial arenas. But I don't think the world has a lot of experience using these sorts of economic and financial tools. And we, it's not so straightforward to assess the collateral damage that will be inflicted with the use of these tools. And, and we, we really should think very hard about how the dynamic that's now being created because of the US-China extreme competition can lead us down a path that will be disastrous for the global economy. Who's to blame, the US or China? I should not comment on that. <laughs> we want to be friends with both America and China for a very long time. <laughs>